spoke at ECL back at the spring, I think it was. And it's really, it was, it was to try and um, tackle some of the um, things that came out of the conversation there, which was the, um, the lack of um, really concrete evidence for what I was doing um, for myself as much as for anyone else. And, uh, and so I wanted to, um, so, so the way I did this was to, to do a survey to try and um, get to grips with um, who everyone was. And uh, I had some help um, because obviously people have to fill out the survey. Um, so obviously I have to thank those people. And many of them are probably in this room, I expect. Um, but I can be assured, and I think the results will demonstrate that not all of them are in this room. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up, actually, because it kind of goes well with um, how it all works out. Um, Lorna and um, they were really helpful in, in working out what kind of questions I wanted to ask. I developed a sort of methodology in my head, which I've since kind of, well, upon asking questions, completely expunged um, to some extent. But I, I think there was, hopefully, the, the, the method of my madness will come through. Um, but I wanted to keep the question short. I wanted to um, get as many responses as possible. And keeping them short seemed like the best way to do that. And in the process, some, some important questions fell out and, and other more interesting ones came up as well. So um, the, the, the process of doing this within English Heritage kicked up its own issues, which was that um, I, I wanted to use SurveyMonkey. I was aware we had SurveyMonkey. And then when I asked to use it, I was um, informed that I would be given access without login details. Um, so Jim Parsons very kindly agreed to update to upload my survey onto um, SurveyMonkey. And um, I greatly appreciate the work she did, but you can imagine the difficulties that having someone else load your survey onto the surveying tool might create to um, the ultimate outcome. Uh, having, having now pr produced the survey and produced the results you'll see today, as well as additional data that I'd be more than happy to share with anyone in this room, um, I've not once actually seen the back end of SurveyMonkey where you enter your questions process your data, or do anything that SurveyMonkey allows you to do, other than fill in the test survey that Gemma very kindly created for me. And um, so I do greatly appreciate the work she did in um, helping making this possible. And also, um, Faye was extraordinarily helpful in showing me how to create pivot tables. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing to stand in front of you as someone who's a, was referred to yesterday as an early adopter, when actually um, Excel is something that I've actively avoided for well over a decade, and um, not knowing how to do pivot tables until about three weeks ago proved to be a real um, challenge. Um, but um, hopefully I've managed to overcome that. So um, this is what I had. I have, I have and have had a mass of people for, for some time now. Um, when I did the survey, I had shortly uh, just over 5,000 followers, and I now have just under 5,800 followers. So um, I have a huge crowd of people, but as you can see from this picture, I didn't really know a great deal about them. And um, I wanted to know more about them. And, and we're gonna, I'm going to just discuss with you how much more I know and uh, the kinds of issues that came up from doing this. So what I'm going to do is really quickly run through um, some of the questions that I had. And then I'm going to try and hone in on, on a particular issue that I want to um, focus in on. I'm going to just backtrack a little bit and um, explain something I've forgotten to explain, which is that um, I maintain the EH Archaeology Twitter feed. A lot of you probably already know that. Um, Emily Glass referred to it yesterday as the, uh, instead of it being a walled fort, we're a walled garden. I mean, sorry, walled, gar walled garden, we're a walled fort. And, um, and it's very literally true. And um, to some extent, a lot of the content is very much that way. That um, when I can find it, it comes from within the fort. And when I can't, it comes from a lot of people in this room, to be honest, as well as um, my trawling through through Twitter, through um, Facebook, through um, Flickr, through LinkedIn, any resource I could find. And um, referring back to the um, kind of adoption of technology, also um, corporate communications email, which is uh, an internal email of kind of archaeology news, which is a wealth of information for a lot of what I, um, what I, what I put out there. And um, so, so we'll just go with, I think we're going to start with um, what I know. And this is the information that I get through Hootsuite, which is the tool we use, and anything we, anything I tweet on the um, EH Archaeology Twitter feed that comes through Hootsuite and that is a link, they can give me stats on. So it encourages me to try and tweet links. Um, and so I know that roughly 65% of the people who, um, who are engaging with 
the tweets that I put out there are in the UK. Now, with 5,000 plus followers, I can be fairly certain that isn't all just archaeologists. But um, we're going to explore that a bit more later. And then um, I also know what, um, what people are doing. So I, I took a snapshot, and the, the previous slide reflects that as well, of um, the activity from October 2011 until September 2012, which is roughly about the time I started the survey. So it's to try and capture that previous year, a snapshot of that. And um, conveniently, it captures what is currently still my most popular tweet, which was the Open University's excavations at Stonehenge. And um, I think starting with WOW made a big difference because it was a really amazing project and a really interesting um, article, I thought. And um, you know, it, was, it was really fascinating, and I think a lot of people felt that way. So I got 108 um, click-throughs directly from me. And I should clarify, these are just the click-throughs that I get. If someone retweets it, that's theirs. I don't get to see any traffic on that. So um, that, that's, that's an obstacle towards trying to understand the volume of activity that is occurring and, and, and how much interaction people are actually having with what I'm doing. So um, of, the most popular of the most popular tweets that I've put out with links, um, I, I went through and, and took that list. And now there's a list of 96 of them, because at some point you just become one. And it becomes one into nausea, so they just cut it off at 96. And, um, or maybe that was just the arbitrary number they chose. But um, I used that, and then I categorized them according to um, so these are the amounts of actual click-throughs people had based on the types of information. And that'll come up later because there's the sorts of questions that I asked uh, people in the survey as well. And then um, these, are, um, these are the types of content that, um, that, that, was being, um, that people were, were engaging with and that, um, that people were interested in. So, OK, and so um, I'm going to run through this really quickly because these are just to kind of summarize the sorts of questions <laughs> I was asking people. So how long have they followed us? Um, who do they think we are? Um, the, um, how active are they on Twitter? Uh, the things they find most interesting and useful, and um, the reliability of the resources that we provide, and, um, and then how, how do we compare to other sources? And, um, and then finally, the point that I really want to go into greater detail on, um, which is, which is um, who they are. And um, it's, it's this group that I really wanted to focus in on was the, the, this, this other. But before I do that, I just want to point out that um, the 38 people of the 106 that took the survey, um, and now 104 I could actually categorize it this way, so I had to drop out two. But the um, 38 people are you know, heritage professionals. These are archaeologists who use Twitter. These are her people working in museums, I, I, academics. I grouped them all together because I wanted to try and um, identify those people who, who well, did that, but also to, um, to just flag up that these are likely to be the people, too, who will be putting out surveys on uh, Twitter and expecting people to um, fill them out. So there's a degree of re reciprocity among at least a portion of this group, and um, that, that de desire and motivation to contribute to other people's research would be really prevalent, I believe, amongst those, the, the, that percentage of, the, um, of, the, of those taking the poll. And so I, it allows me, I think, to say that that 59, those 59 people, the majority of people who took the survey, really are, um, you know, were, reflect a, a good proportion of the people that are actually following. And then, um, and then I also think it's quite interesting there's such a small number of students that actually took part in the survey. Now that could be because they, there's a few, there's, there's very few that follow me, could be very few that are bothered to fill in the survey, um, and it could be that the actual reflection of how Twitter is being used within archaeology as well. And, um, I, you know, I don't know that, but it, it's, it's, I think it's quite interesting. So um, the issue that came up at the last, time we, the last time I spoke at UCL was about this idea of the echo chamber, that really we're just all talking to each other. And um, I think, you know, so I wanted to explore the other people that are in this echo chamber, that everyone else that, that, that is that is out there listening and engaged, to some extent at least, engaged enough to fill up the survey. Um, and, you know, I think that shows a level of interest in and of itself. So, um, so looking at these, um, the, the, the group that, that filled in the, um, the other types of, um, they, were, they were in this other group, I wanted to look at the, um, this is the overall number of, of clicks. 
and I wanted to look at how that related to, um, to what they thought was interesting and what they were engaged with. And, um, and so, so stepping back a little bit, I wanted to look at, these are the most popular um, clicks, and then the, um, the number of tweets is the number of tweets in this, in this area. So just going back to, um, um, there, were two, there were two posts about volunteer opportunities, and among that, oops, sorry, oh my, we've got um, 31, you know, that's, there's, there's a lot of people that think that's a really interesting area, and they were engaging with that. And um, there were also, um, I don't know if I have it here, but there was, let's see, um, anyhow, the, um, those two posts actually got something like 63 hits in total from, from, from the overall um, results. And I, I thought that was quite interesting, because really I'm reliant on a lot of information that I, that I can find around my workplace. I'm also reliant on... Okay. Um, on other people who, um, who produce this content and are looking for volunteers. So by all means, get in touch if you're looking for volunteers, because I think that I can encourage that level of engagement. And um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> um, I also wanted to look at what they thought, how reliable they found the, the feed that I produce is. And um, again, the they, vast majority, I'm really very pleased with that level of reception. Um, <coughs> You know, I mean, to have literally one person say it's variable is, I mean, I, I can live with that. I don't lose any sleep over that. And the don't knows are people that, you know, they literally aren't following anyone else. So they're, 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 their engagement is, is with me and me alone when it comes to archaeology. And again, I'm kind of happy about that, too. Um, and um, so comparing to, other, to the other um, social media that they follow, um, there were four people that don't even follow me, who filled in the survey, which I think is kind of funny. Um, it was pretty clear on the survey that you were, you know, your following of me was a, a component of what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, not knowing is, is, is fair enough. Um, and three words, again, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. And, uh, you know, to be about the same is, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think there's a lot of really good content actually out there. So whether I'm better than that is irrelevant. Um, just to be on par with that is showing that both everyone is doing well and I'm doing my job well, is how I see it at least. And um, so in conclusion, I just kind of, I do feel like in a way, I know a little bit more, but it's just vast amounts I don't. And um, also I just thought I'd show you my charts today and I made a little less. Um, and, uh, and also, um, this, uh, you know, the counts of clicks per tweet. So we've got, this is the slide I was referring to earlier for volunteer opportunities. 62 clicks out of essentially two tweets is, is an incredible amount for, for what I think is, is a, um, you know, a really, a really important area where we're going to need to be engaging more and using digital media to do so. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, that's demonstrating that point, really, um, where I couldn't before this one. And then um, this reliability, again, I just think it's really, it's really fantastic. And, uh, and also, I just wanted to point out, because this came up yesterday, this whole idea of authority, and that um, actually they think it's a public relations team. That could be me not doing my job well, or people having a really inflated idea of what public relations teams are capable of doing. And I don't mean that to put down the public relations team. They do an incredibly good job of maintaining the English Heritage Archaeology, I mean, sorry, the English Heritage Twitter feed, which has tens of thousands more followers than I do, and I think they do a fantastic job. But, um, you know, in the process of trying to, trying to create a different channel to discuss just archaeology, um, it, it may or may not matter that they don't know I'm an archaeologist, but um, it may be an area that I need to improve on in trying to make it clear that this is produced by archaeologists. And I don't want to do that by giving them the answer. I want, them to, I want it to demonstrate that. And maybe that's an area that, that I'm failing to, 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 to meet right now. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say.